Okay, so uh, this week we are going to study something on uh, normal shocks. So normal shocks are <coughs> non-isentropic process that is happening uh, in the flow. So if I have a, a nozzle like what we had uh, discussed in the last uh, few classes. For some pressure ratio, you are going to have non-isentropic solutions. What essentially it means is that you are going to have some kind of shock that is sitting uh, in the diverging section of the uh, nozzle. Uh, what do I mean by that? I will show you a, a video. So in this video, uh, what you see here as these dark lines are the shocks. So you see a slanting shock here, then you have uh, the other shocks there. So I will uh, replay that again. So this is a, a normal shock, this is a, a oblique shock and all those things we are going to discuss in this course. So as uh, uh, these dark bands are larger density uh, uh, gradient values. So, what you see here is something called a, a Schlerin photograph in which uh, the gradients of density is being captured. So, this property, this change in your flow pattern uh, at this particular junction or a thin layer, thin uh, region where you have discontinuity in uh, density and pressure and other quantities are typically called as shock. This is a non-isentropic process, so uh, which essentially would uh, uh, give me a flow pattern in this particular case. So I have a jet that is coming out and this would create a, a, a difference in Mach number because my density is now different. So if you see here, these are uh, larger Mach number regions and the blue regions are your uh, low Mach number regions and in between you see a thin line that is where the jump in Mach number happens and if you uh, see a bit more, these larger Mach numbers once it crosses this thin region suddenly turns into uh, a subsonic flow or uh, a blue region. So the red region is now changed to a blue region once the flow crosses this particular uh, line. So we are going to see uh, in some special cases, some within the assumption of uh, 1D steady flow, whatever I have shown you is an unsteady flow, but uh, the analysis that we are going to do is something on uh, uh, the uh, uh, steady flow. So what do I mean by that? I uh, have a shock that is standing in uh, time and uh, uh, in, in, in at some location and it is not changing with respect to time. So we are going to study some location where I have a, a shock here and this Mach number would large Mach number comes and something happens here and then the Mach number reduces. So your density changes, pressure changes and there are a few other quantities that changes and uh, we will see how to analyze this within this particular assumption. Okay. We will come back to this once we are uh, discussing supersonic flows. So whatever uh, uh, we have shown you in the movie, we are going to discuss in detail the oblique shock waves and the uh, the the uh, normal shocks. Okay. So the topic which I am going to discuss now is standing normal shock. So this, unlike what you have seen in the movie, the shock is standing there still and then uh, we are trying to analyze it. So what are shocks before we start? So if I have a, a fluid particle that is traveling at some velocity, some a large velocity, at some location something happens which forces the fluid to decelerate or the forces the fluid to stop. Okay. 
okay now if this is m greater than 1 this information cannot be going back or going uh, upstream so if this is my uh, upstream direction and this is my downstream direction with respect to the point we are uh, talking so at this point something happens so that the fluid stops suddenly so the fluid particle that comes here does not have this information till it reaches that information that is what we have learned from the uh, propagation of uh, supersonic waves so the fluid here comes and stops or decelerate suddenly to a large value so decelerate to a large uh, velocity uh, gradient so the fluid behind does not know this information comes and hit the same fluid and you will have an accumulation of fluid particles at this particular region at this particular point coming and hitting and coalescing okay and that thin region is called your shock so the sound waves are infinitesimally small pressure waves shock is a finite value pressure wave okay so the large pressure gradient that is moving is your shock so called shock you can uh, the analogy that is given in uh, uh, few books which i have read is that if you have few uh, skiing if you are skiing uh, a group is skiing down the hill okay at some point something happens and the first skier stops suddenly then the person skier that is behind him does not know what has happened comes and hit and the following person comes and hit and then there is a sudden abrupt you know change in velocity of the group of the skiers that is precisely something like this so it comes and it stops or decelerate to a very small value so the Mach number here would change dramatically so at this thin region so as soon as it comes and crosses this the Mach number change because the Mach number change the other properties also change okay now we will see what uh, uh, what is the relation between the Mach number before the wave and uh, before this shock and after the shock and the relation that is uh, 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 connecting these two okay so this particular region is a non isentropic process so in this region it is non isentropic okay because it is uh, it involves sudden changes in properties it involves entropy change and it involves friction and other things okay so it is a non isentropic process so what we will analyze is the following we have a thin shock okay so typically the thickness is of the order of our uh, mean free path so i have a shock here uh, very thin up to this it's an isentropic process after this is again isentropic process but within this thin region you have non isentropic process okay we will also assume steady and quasi 1D okay as before we will also assume our heat transfer is 0 and shaft work is 0 so it is an adiabatic process uh, uh, irreversible adiabatic process steady quasi 1D
So, if I take the shock alone and the control volume here, so this is my control volume and this thick line is my normal shock. So, there is I call uh, this region just properties before the shock as x and after the shock as y. So, if my if I say m x it is the shock uh, uh, Mach number before the shock, m y is the Mach, num Mach number after the shock or it you still can use 1 and 2, but for the for convenience we will use uh, x and y and see how it uh, changes across the shock. So, if this is my control volume, if P is acting on the control volume in an area A, so this is P x A x after the shock is A y and P y, you have rho x and rho y approaching with a velocity V x and V y. So, if I assume my A x equals A y, I apply my momentum equation here, we have not uh, used momentum equations in the previous uh, few uh, classes, so we are going to use that here. So, this is going to be sigma x or sigma x equals assuming it to be 1 t, you have dou by dou t of control volume rho v dv plus control volume C s v rho v d a. Okay. Assuming steady this term would go 0, f of x is the pressure that is acting on this area. So, it would be P uh, y A y minus P x A x. equals this would be rho v x square a x minus rho y v y square a y. So, A x equals A x equals uh, A y, I can cancel out these terms. So, my P x plus rho x V x square the same as my P y plus rho y v y square. So, that is our equation 1. So, x is the pressure before the shock, y is the pressure after the shock, density and velocity. Now, <coughs> we will use the continuity apply continuity equation which is m dot equals rho x v x a x equals rho y v y a y. So, a x and a y are equal so I cancel out. So, my rho x 
v x equals rho y v y. Okay. So that's equation two. Now I apply energy equation. which is q plus h1 hx plus vx square by 2 equals ws plus hy plus vy square by 2. So, we have assumed q equals 0 and w is equal 0. So, we end up with h 0 x equals h 0 y. So, these are across the shocks. Okay. For perfect gas, I can write C p t 0 x equals Z p t 0 y. Okay. Assuming C p to be constant, you will get T 0 x equals T 0 y. So, what do I mean by that? If I have a shock here, the enthalpy here is same as my enthalpy after the shock. So, even though the process is uh, non-isentropic, which does not impose uh, this condition to be uh, wrong. So, we have assumed q equals 0, w is equal 0 is enough to have my stagnation temperatures and stagnation enthalpy to be same. So, the process here is uh, ice enthalpic process. So, shock is essentially is an ice enthalpic. process. Okay. So, we are just assumed our heat transfer and shaft work to be 0. That is the only assumption we have taken and we have arrived at this particular relation. Okay. Now, we also know that your T 0 x or T 0 by T star is gamma plus 1 by 2. Okay. Now, across the shock, my T 0 is constant, which implies my T star is also a constant. Okay which means my T star x is same as my T star y. Now, going further, if this is true, my gamma r T star x is same as my gamma r T star y, which implies my A star x the same as my A star y. Okay. So, across the shock, now I have my T star x equals T star y and A star x also equals to A star y. So, all this from the assumption that Q equals 0, W is equal 0. Okay. Now, we will take uh, this equation, equation 2 and try to uh, uh, 
uh, substitute that in terms of pressure and see what uh, we get. So, like uh, what we had done before, we will write these equations here so that we can discuss it uh, at a later point of time. Okay, that is equation one. Equation two is this, which is uh, the continuity equation. Then we have h zero x equals h zero y, which uh, implies t 0 x equals t 0 y which implies my t star x equals t star uh, y which implies a star x equals a star y. So, we have uh, derived we have seen these uh, many equations. Now, I am going further in the derivation. So, what I will take is Let us number the equation. So, this is equation 1, this is equation 2, and this set is equation 3. Okay. So, what I will do is I have rho x Vx equals rho y Vy. I would uh, I have my p x equals rho x into r t x or I would rather say my rho equals p r t. I would get rho x by rho y as v x by v y. Now, I will substitute this there. So, uh, this would be rho x instead of rho x, I would substitute as p x by r t x into m x into a x equals p y by r t y into m y into a y. Now, a y also I would uh, substitute in terms of temperature. So, this would be P x by R T x into M x into root of gamma R T x equals P y by R T y into M y into root of gamma R T y. So, I can reduce this to P x into M x divided by root T x equals P y into M y by root T y. So, this is from uh, simple uh, continuity equation and substituting the uh, ideal gas equation. So, that is my equation 4. So, this quantity is going to be constant across the shock. So, that is my equation 4. Now, I can relate T by T 0 by T as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square which means I can relate my stagnation quantities before the shock and after the shock in terms of Mach number m x square and m y square.
Now we know Tx, T0x and T0y are same, so I can write Ty by Tx equals 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 mx square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 2 my square. So, this is our T1 minus T2 what we have done uh, previously. So, there is nothing uh, new here from what we had discussed, but just that this is also true across the shock. Okay. So, the property Ty and uh, Tx can be related to the Mach number that is happening before the shock and after the shock. Okay. So, we will for completeness we will uh, uh, write that too. Now, what about uh, P1, P1 by P2? So, I'll drop this. So, I take. Uh, the first equation P x plus rho x V x square equals P y plus rho y V y square. Okay. So, I will take P x, rho x substitute the uh, ideal gas equation by R T x into M x into M x square into A x square which is gamma R T x square T x equals P y plus P y by R T y m y square into gamma r t y. So, this is p y into 1 plus gamma m x square equals p y into 1 plus gamma m y square. So, I can write P x by P y as this quantity 1 plus gamma r m y square divided by 1 plus gamma m x square. These are simple algebra, nothing more uh, here, just that we realize the pressure difference, pressure changes according to your Mach number changes. So, this is my equation 6. So, I gather that and write it here. I will write P y by P x 1 plus gamma m x square divided by 1 plus gamma m y square. Okay, so, this is my equation 6. So, these are the property changes across the shock. Now, what I am going to do is, I am trying to see if there is a relation between Mach number x and y. So, can I relate, if I know my Mach number x, m x, can I find my Mach number m y that is after the shock. Okay. So, I am going to use this equation which is our equation 4 p x m x by root 
T x equals P y m y by root T y okay, which I can rewrite as P x by P y into m y P x by P y into root of T y by root of T x equals my m y by m x. Okay. So, I have written this as from our continuity equation, I have just taken uh, P x by P y. So, I have taken P x by P y and root T x by root uh, T y by T x. Okay. Now, this I know in terms of Mach number which is 1 plus gamma m y square divided by 1 plus gamma m x square. T y by T x also I know in terms of Mach number 1 plus gamma minus 1 m x square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m uh, y square to the power 1 by 2 equals m y by m x. So, this is from equation 6, this is from equation uh, 5. So, I know this relation, this is the pressure before the shock, this is pressure after the shock, likewise temperature after the shock and temperature before the shock. I know these ratios in terms of Mach number before the shock and Mach number after the shock. Now, I am eliminating these quantities and trying to get a relation between m x and m y. So, if I do this, so there is a bit of algebra here, I would get the following equation which I will write it here as my m y square equals m 1 square plus 2 by gamma minus 1 divided by 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 m x square minus 1. So, this is uh, my final equation. So, if you uh, do some uh, algebra here, you will get a quadratic solution and this is the uh, solution for uh, m x square. So, if I know my shock number, shock Mach, Mach number at uh, 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 location before the shock or just before the shock, then I know my Mach number after the shock, that is what it means. Okay. Now, let us uh, let us look at uh, the other equation and try to see what is what is happening here. So, I have a shock m x and m y. I also know that my p x into 1 plus gamma m x square equals p y into 1 plus gamma m y square. Okay. So, this does not distinguishes anything between subsonic or supersonic Mach number. So, let us first consider m x say greater than 1. So, if m x is greater than 1, this ratio implies So, if m x is greater than 1, if m x is greater than 1, you are going to get m y less than 1 here. If you look at uh, this equation, implies your m y less than 1 or p y would be larger than your p x, p y would be greater than your p x, okay, which means this is a compression process. So, what happens here is you have a Mach number, supersonic Mach number comes and there is a shock and then you hit a condition where your m y is m y is less than 1 okay. and suddenly your pressure 
increases to Py. So the flow comes and then says something, all your fluids are coalescing to one thin region and then you see the Mach number is decreasing the other side and your pressure is increasing which is essentially your compression uh, process. Now, if my Mx is less than 1, if I substitute here, Mx is less than 1. If Mx is equal to 1, what happens? So, let us discuss that first. If Mx equals 1, if Mx is equal to 1, if this is 1, 1 plus 2 by gamma minus 1, this is 1. So, it is going to be uh, same as, so let us do that. minus 1. So, this would be gamma minus 1, gamma minus 1 goes. So, this would be gamma minus 1 plus 2 divided by 2 gamma minus gamma minus 1. So, this is gamma plus 1 divided by, so this would be a bracket here. So, this would be gamma plus 1. So, it is 1. Okay. So, your m y is 1. Okay. So, this solution is also present in this particular equation, but this is also the trivial solution, which means there is the you have a Mach number and nothing is changing. If m y is equals m x equals 1, then your pressure ratio here p x by p y is also 1 and hence your temperature if you look at equation 5, this will also be 1. So, it is uh, something like uh, you know a flow with nothing is happening, it is a trivial solution. Okay. So, that is also a solution to whatever we are discussing here. Okay. Now, our problem is the other one. So, this is also equal to m x less than 1. So, what happens m if m x less than 1? If you substitute a value m s less than 1 here, gamma is always greater than 1. So, m x less than 1 would give me a m y greater than 1. Okay, you can substitute any random value and see m y is always going to be greater than 1. Okay. So, if m y is greater than 1, if you look at this equation relating the pressure, your p y is less than your p x. So, if I have a a subsonic flow and if there is something that is happening to, to take me to m y uh, greater than 1, my pressure is going to decrease, which means this is an expansion, expansion shock. So, this is a compression shock and this is an expansion shock. So, this is an expansion shock. Okay. Now, uh, this is not possible, we will derive and show that this is not possible in the next class or the next lecture. We will show that the entropy change during this process is going to be negative and uh, we will also see uh, what is the uh, relation between that when it comes to this, how does m y vary with respect to m x and hence why this is not possible and only this is possible. Uh, we will show that in the next uh, lecture. Okay. For, uh, for the time being, so this is my expansion compression shock and this is my expansion shock. Both of this is a possible solution to this equation which relates my m x and m y. Okay. So, for any given m x, I have a given y. Mathematically, that is possible. Okay. Physically, this is not possible. Again, we will show it uh, using entropy change and the Gibbs equation technique. Okay. Okay. That's uh, for this class. Thank you.